Well, hey everyone, it's Black Chow here. Um, <clears throat> I was trying to do this video last night about this VMAs. Um, you know, I, I do one every year, and I'm sure if I don't do one in the next few days, people are going to start asking for one. So I figured, why not? Um, it was different than the last two years. Last uh, first year, I did it. It was all about backwards stuff, mirroring. Um, you know, Alice to Crowley, all type of stuff like that. This year. Um, it was about bringing in the new people, you know, this whole initiation, the newbies, the neophytes, they were bringing all these new people that you never heard of before. But I mean, according to what they were trying to promote, these are the, this is the future. Um, so they had, it was a new people show. Plus, um, they were doing, you know, instead of being backwards and being satanic, this one was faux consciousness, you know, faux wokeness you know we woke stay woke be woke you know and this was what the theme of this show was um how woke hollywood is now <laughs> okay so um i'm going to try to make this under 30 minutes so let's just get right into what happened Katy perry was hosting it she did horrible um I mean, she just wasn't funny. And then they're showing the people in the audience <laughs> and they're just looking at her like, what are you doing? Um, she comes down, you know, she's like a Martian or she's from Mars. Um, and then they do some like ascended master thing. She comes down from, you know, some planet to enlighten us here on Earth. Um, and then this, the design of the stage, it was like, to me, it looked like a diamond that had exploded outwards. Uh, I had like sh shards and shatters on the top part of the the studio or whatever you would call it, the arena. Uh, and then the main stage appeared to be some sort of a diamond. I don't think it was a spaceship. It looked like a diamond to me. And, you know, pressure creates diamonds and a star is born. And I guess that was what they were trying to go with because it was all about the new people, this one. So... Um, you know, they didn't want to go too too evil, too occult, too much symbolism uh, because they're recruiting, you know. Now, if this was like last year where they had all the, you know, major A-list top money makers there, it would have been different. Uh, but this time it was like, all right, everybody, for the, you know, the ritual people already, it was like, calm down, you know, tone it down. We don't want to scare anybody just yet. Um, so she was hosting it. it she did a terrible I mean, she didn't do a good job they were just looking at her they had ellen there uh, ellen degeneres was just staring at her like what what am i even doing here right now uh but we'll get to that in a second so kendrick lamar comes out he he does this whole you know he he opens the show you know he's all red you know they have fire um you know these people can't do a show without fire it has to be some scenario of fire it has to be in, in a circle of fire and a square of fire and a pyramid of fire um this time he had some guy on fire uh, dancing and swinging the sword around and then they lit some ropes up um and then you know the he had these guys climbing up the ropes of fire you know basically um you know they have to give some homage to you know lucifer to the negative energy to ritual and that was what that appeared to be to me uh and then i didn't even understand what he was saying the music was so loud i'm like what what is he even saying i, I didn't know um but he started to show if he was a main ritual person the point of this show was you know full woke full consciousness but also if you weren't getting an award that night they just didn't show up so only the people that were going to get an award and the new people were the ones that showed up so you know he does this katie perry shows up then they have this uh, michael jackson's quote daughter right you know his daughter and then they're clapping like she's royalty like she's queen elizabeth you know they're like oh my god paris you know they clap you know holding their hand over their chest you know giving the gestures like oh my god it's paris um and yet she walks out she looks like <laughs> She's been off of a five-day bender of heroin or some sort of crystal meth. You know, she looks like she does drugs, hard drugs. Uh, you know, and she shows up. First of all, you know, for black people, many black people, um, it's like a trigger seeing this girl. Because after all these years, decades of supporting the Jackson family and them, you know, exceeding, or Michael at least, exceeding. Um, what any other singer or anyone has ever made in the history of this world in terms of influence and all everything else, you know, and for him to have been a black 
person uh and then he just giving everything you know the keys to the castle to these white people um and you know it's not a race thing it's just you have to understand i mean he made billions of dollars i mean you know and made her this girl an heiress the black community and the world in general has basically made this girl an heiress now and she's sitting up there talking about white supremacy that you know she starts off the whole full consciousness we woke thing by coming out and saying oh you know i'm we're against neo-nazis we're against racist white supremacists um even though i had read an article about how they had her with some guy who had a confederate flag tattooed on him and um and she was messing with him for a while um so that was one thing and then the other thing for me was you know the fact that she could sit up there and say oh you know we're against charlottesville thing and all that that's fine but you have to understand your only reason you're there is because your father believed in some of the same prospects that these white supremacist people believe in which is you know we want our children to be blonde hair blue eyes you know no melanin no black at all um and that's beneath them you know they're subservient race so we don't want our children to be anything having any bloodline of that and that's white supremacy to me and that's what michael jackson did um uh, and then she's sitting up there you know saying all this stuff all right so you know after i was triggered because i was triggered seeing her i see i get triggered any time i see any of them her the brother or the other one um you know i just get triggered because they treat them like oh, you know royalty this is not royalty this, these people have nothing to do with michael jackson other than you know he paid some their their mother or their, their real parents to procreate these people so anyway, so she does this for woke, we're against racism, they're clapping. Then she announces the first award, which is uh, for Fifth Harmony. <laughs> and, you know, like I always say, every time Fifth Harmony wins an award, they just like, oh, my God. Like, they're just like so shocked that they win, even though they were sitting in the front row, like they were sitting like right by the stage. <laughs> and uh, and then she goes, oh, Fifth Harmony. And they're like, they're just shocked. One girl is crying, you know, they're like, oh, my God, we can't believe it. You know, they do it every every time I've ever seen any of these award shows. They do the same thing. Like, they're just so shocked, and, you know. This show was a lot about, it was just superficial. You know, this is how Hollywood is. It's like, on the surface of it, it seems legit. Like, on the surface of them getting up there going like, oh my God, we're so humble. Like, we can't believe this. You're like, wow, you know, like, that's cute. You know, the girls, they really worked hard and everything, which I, I can't take away. I'm sure they do. But then later on in the show, you realize, oh, well, this is clearly why you won the award. Because they do this performance. Um... And it's just like a beta sex slave performance. You know, they're in a box, uh, in a glass box. They're like dolls that kick the glass out of the box. Uh, you know, they're on their own people now. Uh, and then the, the black girl, uh, because first of all, one of them is missing. So I guess they kicked one out or one of them left. So, the, uh, so you know, it's four of them now. So they get up there after they accept this award and like, oh my God, they're crying. Then they do this performance and it's just like, they're just like, beta sex i mean you know i'm being nice by calling it that because it was a real you know sexed up uh performance and then in the end with the black girl she does this split during the middle of the show uh, during the middle of their performance and the crowd just goes wild but you know i've been saying that the black girl has been carrying them for a minute now uh even though really none of them can really sing but the black girl can dance and she can move so they put her in the middle and you know and then the other ones just kind of you know keep it up keep up with the moves and that's the that's the that's the group uh but then in the end they get the whole bunch of water just dunked on them uh so they ended up the performance wet literally uh they just dunked some water and then that was also what was so funny to me was you know it was supposed to be this sjw social justice warrior like we woke type of show but then they would make them do that which obviously means that you know they force them to do that the, the elites the brotherhood the illuminati whatever you want to call them their handlers told them that oh well you know we're gonna have at the end after you all do all this you know twerking dropping it slut drop um all this stuff then after all of that then we're gonna have a five gallons of water <laughs> dumped over your head to just make you wet at the end you know um 
you know, and I was like, wow, well, I thought this was supposed to be all SJW feminists, like we're so strong and everything. And then for them to do that to them, you know, it wasn't a good look. Uh, so I'm assuming that they didn't ask to do that themselves. The handlers told them to do it. They had Gucci Mane come. Uh, with some woman i'm assuming that's his wife uh, and because she came on dropping it too she was dropping it popping it um twerking it and he was rapping and then you know they were <laughs> they showed the people in the audience and they're just looking at like okay so that happens and i guess they doing a show for gucci uh, and his wife so it was like some cross promotion viacom cross promotion uh he showed up um but the main point of the show was that it was supposed to be this whole, you know, social justice, you know, we woke. So one of the points of the show, they have this suicide hotline performance. So Kesha shows up and she actually tr had triggered herself. She does this monologue reading off the teleprompter and, you know, talking about suicide prevention and, you know, you know, how many people are affected by it. And then she goes something like light into darkness. She says something along those lines. And it was like she triggered herself. She literally had a physical reaction to her saying that she had to kind of stop for a second, get herself back together and then continue reading the line. So that was bizarre. I was like, was she having a, it was like a glitch, you know, it was like a glitch in the matrix type of thing. Um, so and then so she announces this performance now and it's very unsettling i mean me watching it i was a little unsettled by it they had this number of this suicide hotline number uh and they have it like 10 times 10 to 12 13 14 15 times up on this board so you can see the number um and then they have this kid coming out he's doing this rap uh and the rap was very triggering i mean if I was somebody that was at risk for a suicide thing. To be honest with you, I don't think that song makes you feel any better about it. Because, I mean, the lyrics of the song is, you know, he, you want to die, all this. I mean, in the end, he flips it, you know, where you don't want to die. But, I mean, I feel like you could have, um, you know, made that message without having to say those exact words of triggering people. I felt it was a triggering song, in my opinion. Uh, and then they have the number... Even though if you ask me now what the number was, I couldn't tell you. But anyway, so he's doing this thing to have this girl, this new girl. Um, all these people are new. So they bring this girl, Alicia, because, you know, they had been featuring her throughout the show, giving her stuff, uh, you know, because she's all about natural and, you know, being you no matter who you are and all this stuff. That's what she is now. <laughs> you know, we'll see in two years from now how the, if she'll still be doing the same thing. Uh, but anyway, so she comes out with the guy. They're doing this whole thing. And it's like this, you know, it's supposed to be about suicide prevention. So then they bring these people out wearing these shirts with the number and saying, you know, you are not alone. They have an Asian woman crying. Um, and then he does. And then the kid does this. He starts talking. You know, he starts doing this whole speech thing afterwards. And, you know, at first, to be honest with you, like when I because I don't know who any of these people are. So when I first looked at him, I thought, you know, he was just some white kid. But then as he's doing this whole thing, it was like, oh, well, he's obviously black because he was doing this like preacher, you know, like sing song. You know, <laughs> most black people here in this country know what I'm talking about. It's like the sing song rhyming kind of talk. Um, and the sad part is that when they start doing that, you know, he's just talking out of his ass, which he was doing. You know, he's talking about the stuff that's on his album. He's talking about you know racial discrimination and domestic abuse and he's like oh I, you know i'm gonna do i have all this on my new album and you gotta look at it you gotta check it out and uh oh and then he goes this stuff the mainstream media doesn't want to talk about um psychiatric issues and all that and i'm like what I'm like wait a minute now you know coming from somebody like me for him to sit up there on mtv award show and say oh this is what the mainstream media doesn't want to know i felt insulted but you know he's saying they don't want to talk about psych psychiatric evaluation or whatever and i'm like they don't because as long as they can continue this whole um scam of psychiatric where you know we're just doping people into you know insanity or doping people into submission that was basically he and he doesn't even get that you know he's just saying oh they don't want to talk about mental illness yeah but you have to understand that the psychiatric psych psychiatric industry was basically founded so that they could just diagnose people with 
various things and then you know just give you medication th th so that the, now the pharmaceutical companies and all of them can make money off of it so it's a total racket uh, on top of you know the fact it just makes people so docile etc um, now I know it's subjective because I've people have told me personally like well you know my family member whomever had like serious psyche uh, you know issues and that the medication was the only thing that helped them so I'm like okay but the point is is that you know him saying that was like I felt it I personally felt insulted but anyway that was one of the <laughs> faux you know we will type of things um, you know that he was doing this whole thing because, uh, you know, maybe it will help somebody who is going through suicide or thinking about it or something. I mean, in my opinion, I thought if the song was triggering, it would be a trigger, if anything. Um, and I don't know the number to the thing, the hotline. But, you know, maybe it will help. That was the second thing they did that was supposed to be faux conscious. The third thing was Pink Wins. <laughs> so they have this. You know, because every year they do the VMA, somebody has to get this Michael Jackson honorary visionary future dancer, singer, you know, person of the future award. And so this time it was Pink. So, you know, she does this marathon performance. She Because first of all, the thing about Pink was throughout the whole show, they kept showing her with this little boy sitting there, right? With boys wearing the suit, you know, they're all wearing this suit, these suits, her, the husband and this kid, you know. So you're like, OK, you know, whatever. So, you know, because you know that that's how pink is, you know, she always dressed like a butch. So it's like, OK, so then she gets up. She's doing this performance. I got to give her credit that uh, it was all duality, black and white, the whole thing with pink. Uh, but I'll give her credit that during the performance, they have the car. It's like she's standing on top of this car and they have the car uh, on suspension wires or something like that. So it can float her across the crowd and she stood up on the on that damn car without any uh, support uh, support ropes so i'll give her credit for that because she she could have <laughs> she could have got messed up over that but anyway so she does this performance and stuff that keeps showing the kid then ellen comes out because now we realize why ellen was there because you know this whole time katie perry was trying to do these jokes they were just looking at her like, and Ellen was one of the people looking at her like, what are you doing? And now we know this is why Ellen showed up, was to present this award to Pink. So Ellen shows up, you know, she's doing the black and white duality thing too. So she shows up, she's, uh, and then you know, she's saying things that she shouldn't. I'm like, Ellen, why are you saying, you know, she's saying uh, Cher was sick, Cher was this, Cher couldn't make it, Cher was the first choice. But, you know, she just called, Pink just called her and asked her to give her the award and all this stuff. I'm like, you don't have to say all of that, you know. And then she basically says, oh, uh, well, I'm missing Game of Thrones to be here. Um, so, you know, it better be good. And then basically I'm missing Game of Thrones to be here. And the only reason why she was doing it was <laughs> was because Pink sings the theme song to the show, you know, to her show that she has. So it's like she owes her a big one. So anyway, so she announces, gives Pink the award. Because, you know, I wasn't really surprised that Ellen was being like that. Because people I know personally, you know, outside of YouTube have told me that they've encountered her uh, and that she's really not that nice of a person so it wasn't really shocking that she would get up there and run her mouth like that so anyway so pink gets up and then pink does this whole speech shaming the daughter okay so the same kid that we had been see seeing this whole time that you thought was a boy it comes to find out it was actually a girl and pink is saying this story about how the girl told her that she's the ugliest girl she knows and that she has a boy haircut okay then Pink goes on to start saying, you know, because everybody's in the car is like, oh, you know, now it's so Pink goes on to say how she showed the girl pictures of Michael Jackson, of David Bowie, of all these people and showed her, oh, well, you know, androgynous people are OK. You know, you can you can be whatever you want and all this stuff. And again, this is how this show was at surface level. You're like, OK, like, all right, fine. Like, you know, you want to be whatever. But then when you actually like read between the lines of what she was saying if you listen to the story she said that the girl said that she didn't like the haircut because it made her look like a boy so that means that so you know it means that she doesn't want the haircut it makes her look like a boy plus pink had her there dressed up in men and boys clothes in a boy suit uh 
so I'm like, I don't understand. I, I don't get it. I thought you're supposed to be accepting of everyone. And, you know, and if this little girl who was born a girl wants to dress up like a girl, what's wrong with that? Uh, and that she that that's something wrong with that, because how dare this little girl say that? Because her mother dresses like a, a man. So why shouldn't you and why shouldn't you be OK with it? And that was you know, it was basically shaming the little girl because she brought the girl there. Number one, why would you do that? It was an adult show. You bring a six year old girl there and then tell what, the little, you know, try to put the little girl on the spot. You know, they have the cameras there on the girl's face and her saying, oh, well, you can be whatever. But the girl doesn't want to dress like a little boy. I'm like, and so what's, you know, so really that was Pink trying to project her own bullshit onto the girl and onto everybody else. Uh, but again, this is what the show was. You know, it's just fake wokeness consciousness show. And, you know, most of the people felt, oh, you know, this show was so conscious. <laughs> yeah, right. So after I was because I was also offended at that. I mean, first I was triggered by the Michael Jackson girl and then Pink saying that to the girl and trying to make the girl feel a certain type of way. She's a girl. Uh, and if she wants to have a girl's haircut, not look like a member of the Adams family and dress in a little a dress or you know like how girls do little girls six-year-old girls do there's nothing wrong with that and they should have booed pink that's what they should have did but you know so that was the third quote woke thing that they did um besides of course giving all the awards to kendrick lamar you know that's as woke as they're gonna get you know we're gonna give all these awards to kendrick quote conscious rap even though all right, let me just finish the last point. So the last point of what they did was, <laughs> you know, you sit and was watching this show. It was like three. It was so long, in my opinion. It was so many different people. You don't know who any of these people are. In the intro, they're like giving like 200 names. And I'm like, who are these people? Like, I'm like, what? Who, who are any of these people? So you're just sitting there like, I don't know who any of these people are. So then eventually this pastor comes up. And you're like, OK, so <laughs> what's about to go down now? Um, and he comes on there. He starts talking about, he, he says his name is Robert Lee. So you're already like, okay, so they're about to jump some, you know, jump this off again. So he says that he, of course, is a descendant of Robert E. Lee, the Confederate, you know, wanted to keep black people as slaves and three fourths of a human being type of person. So he comes out and he's like, well, you know. I'm totally against this racism and this hatred and we all need to stand together to, you know, stand up against it. Um, you know, and so they were clapping. I was like, OK, MTV, you know, they pulled out all stops for this whole wokeness and <laughs> wokeness campaign. Um, so, you know, he's saying that, you know, he's like, yeah, you know, I'm not a racist. I, I'm here to prove it. He, and he's like, you know, he's basically telling you and how, now he's going to prove it to you that he's not a racist. So he brings out the lady from. Charleston you know this girl's mother so the woman comes out and I'm like okay I'm like all right so this is how this works you know they just once something somebody gets shot or somebody dies in one of these things now you know they become part of this little group so I'm sure next year when Beyonce shows back up this woman's mother will be there with Trayvon's mom and, and Mike Brown and Leslie and all of them so she comes out and then she's doing this Thing, this speech about you know how her daughter died fighting race uh, fighting hatred um and that now she was there that night to um what she was there that night to announce that they were doing a, a foundation in this girl's honor so but then what was so weird about it is she goes oh well the foundation is to give scholarships to people who want to fight hatred i'm like well, what does that mean? I, you know, that was bizarre. I'm like, well, what, what does that mean? You're going to give scholarships to people who want to fight hatred. That sounds like we're writing a check to BLM and to Antifa and to whomever. I mean, what does that mean, a scholarship to fight hatred? I, I don't know. It was a kind of bizarre. Um, but she, you know, they have the foundation at the lower thirds on the bottom of the screen. Like, yes, you can go donate here now. Um, and then she also said that she was there to... She didn't present an award, but she was talking something about some uh, raid fight against the system award that they were giving out at the MTV, you know, at the VMAs. <laughs> and then, you know, it's all the woke people, you know, so these woke new people. So they have the Alessia girl, you know, the natural girl. 
<laughs> they they all you know she's up for nomination for fight against the system award then they have um this kid this is the name of the kid logic this this biracial kid who's doing this whole suicide hotline thing um and he's so proud of himself when the lady is like reading off the people who who are nominated he's just so proud of himself that you know he he's getting nominated for this fight against the system award and i'm like okay like <laughs> this is the best they're gonna do so whatever like let him have his he's in, enjoying his moment let him have it so whatever um and then the other funny thing was after she did all of that and they like clap for her i will give her she was actually a better teleprompter reader than 90% of the people they had up there. Uh, this girl's mother, Heather, Heather's, you know, Heather Heyer. Um, the, the mother was 10 times better of a uh, teleprompter reader than like all of them. So anyway, then she's going to walk off her and the Robert E. Lee pastor, man, they go to walk off the stage. And then they have Stephen Baldwin, one of these, <laughs> one of these Baldwin people, his daughter is in there in her underwear, <laughs> talking about i don't even know like I, I don't even know what she was talking about she was just in her underwear she 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 was basically in her underwear then had something over it which i guess is a dress um and then throwing up the goat you know giving her gestures throwing up the goat and then announcing some performance and i was like well i mean i guess that's why she was there you don't sing you don't dance so you're either going to be either going to be here to be a sex slave or to be satanic and she ended up being both so good for her uh i guess that was how she ended up on the show but it was just like kind of weird that they had you know this woke moment you know moment of wokeness on the show and then <laughs> it just followed up by just whoredom you know whore, satanic whoredom basically um so that was interesting but that was basically the show you know it was a whole bunch of new people uh they had to you know it was a lot of people there um they had who tiana taylor there they had some girl talking about her and she was in foster care uh it was kind of weird she, this girl black girl comes out and she's going off about foster care and how she was in she's representing all the kids in foster care and stuff and i was like all right i mean look like she you know did she was doing a little bit of, of something uh, before the show but you know they all look like they're having a good time because all these are new people you know and then every once in a while they would show the, you know, the ritual people the people who've been in the industry for like more than like you know four or five years and they're just sitting there like you know like this is you know like whatever um you know just unaffected because they just know what the game is and then they have all the new people and the new people you can tell the new people because they're all smiling they're grinning they're giving a kool-aid smile they had this one guy khalid khalid or whatever uh and he was so happy i've never seen anybody so happy to win one of these awards at this show than him um he was so proud of himself and you know it's you know it's crazy because unfortunately this is how inverted pyramid system is like you would think that yeah like this is great but all he's doing is walking into, you know, about to into soul selling or rituals or whatever. Um, and that was why they toned it down this year. It wasn't supposed to be too overt because they had too many young people, not young people. So per se, but new people that they were trying to bring in that they didn't want to really scare them off. Um, so they gave all the awards to Kendrick. Um, who else got an award? This guy, Ed Sheeran, got an award. This uh, Alessia, woke girl. She was getting stuff. Um, and yeah, I mean, they had a Taylor Swift video of Satanic. I mean, she was doing all these. Um, what is this? She had all these multiple different personalities. Um, it was just evil. It, you know, it was, she was declaring herself as God, basically an idol. She's over everybody. She's above you. Her experience is above all of you. And she's God. So just bow down. That was what I got from the video. Um you know, among other things, they had the bird cage in there, you know, like MK Ultra things. She was signing a contract in the bird cage, so I don't know what that meant. Um, that was basically a Katy Perry wasn't, I mean, I'm like, what are you doing? Um, you know, she doesn't know who she is either. She, she's she got so many different personalities also. She don't know what's going on. And that was basically it. Bieber didn't show up. They didn't have uh, Beyonce, Sean Carter didn't show up. Rihanna didn't show up. I mean, I guess Beyonce's maybe trying to raise some money for these people in Houston. Uh, that was where she was born. Um, so I might do a video also on that because, I mean, these people are getting totally flooded out. But it seemed like, for the most part, 
um, the government or the state government, at least um, in Texas, that did a pretty good job of preparing for the thing so that, you know, there's just not dead people floating in the water like what happened in um, New Orleans. You know, it seems like they came a lot much prepared for it. Um, but, you know, a lot of people are affected. So. But anyway, I just wanted to quickly do a video on the VMAs. Um, you know, this year it was all about wokeness and SJW and, you know, hate Trump. And Katy Perry was saying things like, oh, you know, vote for your favorite person you want to win now because uh, of this show, the popular count uh, matters. And if you don't vote, then some Russian pop star might win. And they all like laughed at that. Um, but that was basically it. They showed some weird commercials. Adidas has two weird commercials they showed during the show. And it was all about cloning, transhumanism. They had James Harden. They had Young Thug. They had Kendall Jenner in there. Um, and it was just some weird shit. I mean, it was about basically... It was like a Luciferian type of thing. Like, this is where we're trying to go. And then they were singing the Frank Sinatra, you know, I'll do it my way. Um, so it was all about, you know, we are God. This is the next step. We're going to start bringing this cloning, you know, uh, you know, rebirth. It was a whole bunch of weird occult subliminals. Um, and I'm like, wow, Adidas, this is this what you need to do to sell sneakers? Having people coming out of a bag, cloning. And it, it, it was um, that was actually the most blatant thing I saw the whole night. Those two Adidas commercials. And then um, Amazon has this Alexa, <laughs> Alexa. I don't even know what it is. I mean, besides just surveilling on you, because it doesn't do anything necessarily. I, I don't that I I mean, you just ask it stuff and it tells you or you just tell it to do stuff and it does it. But I'm like, you can't turn off a light by yourself. You have to ask the thing. And then the commercial is, you know, oh, Alexa, can you look up a pizza restaurant? Oh, Alexa, can you? And it's like you can't do that yourself. Oh, because you're, you know, you're, you're base, you're icing a cake. You can't pick up the phone and look to see you know you have to do ask alexa and then in the commercial it goes alexa thank you oh thank you alexa yeah thank you alexa for surveilling on me sending all my data back to amazon the nsa and jeff bezos uh to some data center somewhere that nobody knows about so that they can store your information for the next 20 years or so oh yeah thank you alexa and then in the commercial goes oh you're welcome <laughs> i was like wow that, that's a joke that was a real joke. So I got a good laugh out of that one. Um, but, you know, that was the show. Um, oh, Lord. So then they had Lord come up. <laughs> Lord does this performance. Because who announced? Oh, some Jewish guy. Right. So they had some, this model ambrosia uh, with this, you know. And I know a lot of people talked about transvestigation. Who's a train and who's not. I'll tell you something. I'll be honest with you. When I looked at her that night, she really did look like. You know, she might need a little transvestigation. But anyway, she was sitting there with this guy, this Jewish guy, and he's wearing this Star of David, you know, the five point uh, Rothschild, you know, Star of David. Uh, and I'm like, what the hell is going on? So he, you know, the two of them, then they introduce Lord. Um, and then she's doing this weird dance, but she was doing this weird dance with some health blankets. I'm like, did she buy the blanket? I mean, I don't know if they're exactly my blankets because she didn't have the gold on the on the other side, but it basically looked like material for my stuff. Um, and I always tell people, you know, you, you, you can buy my product to make arts and crafts product. You know, you could look just like Lord. You go for the Lord look in gold because you know my blankets are in gold and now you know maybe i'll do a lord special ten dollars mtv special <laughs> uh, but truthfully the product the blankets are now being sold at ten dollars check them out i'm still selling them um and to be honest you, you should buy some and send some down to the people in texas because i'm sure they can actually use some they retain heat you wrap yourself up in it and it keeps you warm keeps the body heat in because i don't think people really know what it does keeps the body heat in um and it is windproof rain waterproof um and apparently lord liked the look of it she was up there you know doing some interpretive dance with it all so you know i figured i'd bring that up too um but that was basically the show it's all about the new people the new people and being full woke so you know hollywood if you're going to keep coming with this we're conscious we're woke 
you're gonna have to try a little bit harder than that because telling people oh this stuff mainstream media doesn't want to talk about psychiatric issues they always talk about that because they're always using that to blame oh he was crazy you know this lone gunman you know he was just a crazy person no he had nothing to do with the fbi no he was just crazy and this is why you know we need um a better uh, just like obama said we need a database so that now if you're going to get a gun you know we have your psychiatric evaluation tied into the system so that we can just tell you whether or not you're too crazy to get a gun or you know whether you're too crazy to do anything whether you're too crazy to get a driver's license who knows um so I thought that was funny. And if logic, uh, this, for the, this logic character, if you want to know about things the mainstream media doesn't want to talk about, you need to come to Black Child YouTube channel because you'll see a whole bunch of things the mainstream media doesn't want to talk about. Okay. So anyway, I'm wrapping it up. Um, I did the VMAs video. I'm still working on the deep state stuff and all the various other stuff. Some people on my, my Patreon page have asked me to... Um, release the duality world video so i'm going to i guess do that by the end of the week and yeah so until next time people saying the truth stand the lord i'll see you on the next one all right